we are going to be making mosaic pieces out of CDs. Um, this is a cactus that I have not actually glued yet, so that's if you see some shifting of the pieces as I move it, that's why. Um, but all I did was cut up a CD and I am going to use either tacky glue or a glue gun to secure them in place. For our project, we are going to be using a wooden tray that you can put things like your phone or your keys or any jewelry um, and just have it look, sit and look pretty on your uh, table or dresser. So we're going to take a regular CD. Uh, these are CDs that are no longer playable, not ones that we can use in the library anymore. That's why they are all for the crafts. So the first thing you want to do is take regular scissors and you are going to take your disc and just carefully, so it did shatter a little, carefully cut it. that didn't shatter. I'm only using the very back part of the scissors. And I am going very slowly and paying attention to the disc as I cut. There we go. Because I want to avoid the shattering. I'm just going to cut my disc. Now I like starting with the slightly smaller pieces. That's just a personal thing. Um, I have also got this cut and forth. This is a previous disc that I cut up. I did see a video where they cut the disc in little petals and then just cut the petals off. You can do that. I just kind of did that. And once you have your disc cut down into a manageable piece like this, you can then cut it to any shape you want. As I was cutting, my hand started to get tired and you can see that my edges did start shattering a little bit. There is a way to help you cut without having any edge shattering. I got about two CDs um, worth cut completely into little hexagons. So one of the ways to fix that is to use a bowl of hot water. This particular bowl of water is just hot tap water and swish my hand through there. It's warm, but it's not boiling or hurtful. Because I'm doing hexagons, I have um, drawn my, or traced rather, my hexagon on the back of everything. And I'm just gonna let those soak for a few minutes um, before I try to cut them. Once the pieces have been soaking for just a few minutes, I can go ahead and take them out and they cut fairly easily. So I've got a paper towel set and ready to go, and there's my shape. Put that down to dry and cut the rest. In this tray, I have some triangles that I cut out of a previous disc. That's how I did the cactus. I would not recommend circles. Those I think would be a little bit harder to cut out. And I do recommend having a couple of like Tupperwares or empty boxes around to help uh, keep yourself organized. Um, a box for triangles, a box for rectangles, a box for all of your little scrap pieces that shattered or that you can't do anything with. This 
is the type of thing that once you get everything cut, you do want to um, play with it to make sure that you get it just the way you want it. And if there are slight variations in size, um, this is also where you will be. It is your choice. I do recommend sticking to straight sided shapes, uh, but that doesn't really limit you much because you can do squares, rectangles, triangles, octagons, hexagons, you know, pretty much any of the agongs uh, except for circles. Um, just be and the only reason I say no circles is because I think they'd be very hard to cut. I have decided that I'm going to make a bunch of hexagons and tile the bottom of my box. Um, so to make my hexagons all of the same size and to try and make them the same uh, quality as well, so nice and square, what I did is I printed out a picture I found online of a honeycomb or a hexagon grid, cut out one of the hexagons. I want to work on the side with the label that we won't see and leave the fancy holographic side alone. So all I did, to save myself some cutting, I am going to position one edge of my hexagon on the edge of my CD and use my Sharpie to trace around it. Now I should be able to get two hexagons on each quarter of the CD, so that is a total of eight hexagons per disc. The reason that I have cut down the middle between my two little traces of hexagon, um, and in fact I probably could have cut it into eighths and then trace my hexagon, is you, with a piece of paper, if you make a cut, you can then maneuver and keep cutting. With the CD, you cannot maneuver it. Pretty much need to cut just um, straight across each time. So this just makes it easier to cut straight across without worrying about cutting into my next hexagon. And do this in an area where kids and pets will not get into all of the little CD shards. Um, some of the fragments that I am cutting off are going flying, so you want to be very careful about that. So I can just keep stacking them up. I think this one is a little bit fatter because I cut on outside of the line instead of the inside of the line. You can see this one there's less black marker so I could go and trim that up. Um, but I am going to off camera um, trace and cut all the rest of my hexagons until I have trifle. So I have all of my hexagons cut I know what pattern they are going to fit in the box. So all I'm going to do is take some tacky glue. I could also use hot glue or Mod Podge. Um, you could even try using Elmer's glue. I don't know if that would be strong enough, but Elmer's glue is surprisingly versatile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue all down the side. Don't need a lot. I'm going to lay my first row of tiles in. And if you want to be a little bit more detailed about this, you can 
get a small paintbrush or sponge to paint your, um, pretty much paint around your glue once you've squeezed it in. And then just keep on going. Now, because of the size of my tiles, even though I am keeping them touching each other on one axis, or one um, side, I'm leaving a gap between my columns. So my gap in the middle is a little bit bigger than my gaps on the sides. Oops. And it looks like most of my glue has already pretty much hardened. That's okay. I'm gonna use my finger to wipe up some of the extras. Now to fill in the space, you can um, go out and get regular grout. You can use glue to try and like chase through your lines. Just to fill it in and give you a smooth surface. You can use epoxy, you can use resin. You can leave it the way that it is. You could get contact paper, which um, clear contact paper which is basically a giant clear sticker sheet that you could put on over top. It would still be a little bumpy, but at least you wouldn't have the sharp edges. Um, there's a lot of things you can do to finish this off. But uh, yeah, this is pretty much done. Now all I have to do is wait for the glue to dry, and then I'll be able to kind of give it a little buff. And I'll have my finished try. If I get really ambitious, I might cut some half hexagons to go into the edges. Maybe even some triangles. But uh, I'm pretty happy with it.